Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Major transition taking place at AMA. Long-term FAA reauthorization bill introduced in the U.S. House. And Intel drones entertain at Coachella Valley Music Festival. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. It's a little bit sad and yet a bit cool to see AMA make an exciting change in leadership as hardworking Executive Director Dave Mathewson passes the baton to longtime AMA's public relations and government affairs guru, Chad Bedreau. AMA boss Rich Hansen tells us Dave Mathewson's plan to resign as AMA's Executive Director and that the Executive Council has launched a nationwide search to fill this extremely important position. The process will consider candidates from both inside and outside the organization in an effort to find the most qualified and experienced individual to serve as executive director and chief operating officer. The process will likely take several months. In the interim, the executive council has appointed Chad Bedreau to serve as the interim executive director upon Dave's retirement. Rich adds that I don't believe AMA could be in better hands, and I look for Chad to be one of the top candidates in the executive director's selection process. ANN gets to work with the best and worst of Aeroverse as we cover news from all walks of aviation life. And we have to tell you, both Dave and Chad have proven themselves to be some of the best we've ever worked with, and more important, as AMA continues to protect the model world from all foes, foreign and domestic, we believe the organization and the hobby will stay in great hands. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The French Federation of Model Airplanes has released documents that could become the foundation for new drone regulations in that country. The draft documents call for an electronic ID to be installed aboard drones that weigh more than 800 grams transmitting the aircraft's ID, position, altitude, date and time, and the direction and speed of the aircraft. The rules would also require a signaling light that would flash the letter U in Morse code to indicate it is an unmanned vehicle. Coolest event ever! That's how Margot Edwards described the first ever drone boot camp at Leigh's Murakami Stadium at the University of Hawaii. About 100 people attended the March 30th event hosted by the University of Hawaii Applied Research Laboratory in collaboration with the Office of the Vice President of Research and Innovation. Two of the world's leading safety standard developers are joining forces to help the growing number of public safety professionals who want to use drones in UAS to help protect and save lives. The National Fire Protection Association and ASTM International have signed a Memorandum of Understanding to support a joint working group of about two dozen top experts in public safety and drone technology. It may be one more sign of the times. The Fort Worth Police Department has confirmed that Drone Shield was used by various law enforcement entities for the protection of the 2018 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series at the Texas Motor Speedway. Monitoring of drone activity at high-profile mass events has become an important component of event management, similar to perimeter access control or participant credentialing. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Leaders of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee last Friday introduced the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018, a five-year bill to reauthorize the programs of the FAA. Drone attorney Jonathan Ruprecht has done a deep dive into the reauthorization bill. He notes that the legislation tells the Comptroller General of the United States to do a study on appropriate fee mechanism to recover the costs of the regulation and safety oversight of unmanned aircraft and unmanned aircraft systems, 
and the provision of air navigation services to unmanned aircraft and unmanned aircraft systems. Other items of note include a directive for the DOTIG to conduct a study on the regulation and oversight of low-altitude operations of small unmanned aircraft and small unmanned aircraft systems, and appropriate rules and responsibilities of federal, state, local, and tribal governments in regulating and overseeing the operations of small unmanned aircraft in airspace 400 feet above ground level and below. It also amends Section 336, adding that an aircraft cannot be considered a protected model aircraft if it flies over or within 500 feet laterally of a facility that operates amusement rides for the general public, allows for flight instruction or educational flights, even if compensated, to be done in the protected model aircraft category. There are also expanded definitions for a community-based organization as it relates to model aircraft. The 2017 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival took fans into the future when 300 synchronized shooting star drones eliminated the night sky. A crowd of more than 100,000 Coachella concertgoers saw 300 Intel shooting star drones take the shape of a Ferris wheel, then a rotating windmill, palm trees, and other colorful 3D animated objects. Presented by HP, the Intel Power Drone Light Show first appeared at Coachella after indie pop band The XX finished their set, just before Radiohead took the stage. The drones flew again behind the main stage before Lady Gaga's performance on Saturday. Coachella planners worked with Intel to integrate the drone light show into the festival schedule. Test flights at Indio helped the planning process, but the team still faced last-minute challenges, including high winds. But according to software engineer Toby Gurdon, each time the drones perform, the team learns and improves. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.